Hi, my name's Paul Francis and I'm an astronomer here at the Australian National University. This is one of a series of videos explaining some of the unsolved mysteries of the universe. There are many places on the web where you could find about the mysteries of the universe we've solved, like the press releases of any astronomical institute, but today I want to talk about some of the things that we don't know the answer to. And as usual, the aim is not to give you an answer, because you don't know it, but maybe a more refined form of ignorance. In this video, I want to talk about the fate of the universe. Questions don't come much bigger than this. What's happening to our universe? Where is it going? What's going to happen to it all? Oh, you're going to die! Yes. Um, now, this is a story that actually starts quite a long time ago. It starts back in the 19th century with the discovery of spectroscopy. This was an incredibly useful thing discovered by 19th century physicists. The idea was that if you send light through a prism, it gets broken up into different colours, red, green, blue, and you can measure the precise amount of energy at all these different wavelengths. And that will give you a graph that looks something like this, um, showing you the amount of energy against wavelengths. It's the blue wavelengths, the red wavelengths, not much energy down the bottom, lots of energy up the top. Um, this is used by, for many different people, it's used by chemists and um, biologists and even art conservators to work out what chemicals are made of, because it turns out that every chemical has its own characteristic wavelengths. So this is a spectrum of a galaxy, and see there's a big bump over here, and someone who's looked at more spectra than I've had hot meals, like me, that says um, the bump at this wavelength, um, 5007 angstroms, to be precise, indicates that oxygen is present. A bump over here at 4861 angstroms indicates that hydrogen is present. Um, dips down here due to calcium, this is magnesium hydride, and so on. So people would point their spectrograph at things on their lab on Earth or in things in space and just look up, oh, there's a bump here, and they look up the table and work out what we made of, what element it is, hydrogen, oxygen, whatever. Incredibly useful because you can't actually go into space and take samples. This is the only way of working out what's actually going on up there. There was just one itty bitty problem. In the 1920s, telescopes became powerful enough to measure spectrum not just the nearby galaxies, but the far away ones. And they looked something like this. So, it's got bumps and wiggles, all right, but they're not in the right place. So, you see a bump here. And people would look up their table of elements and say, oh, that doesn't match up with anything. Or maybe it matches up with some really weird element you don't normally expect, you know, scandium or something. So, you've got a whole bunch of lines, and they're in the wrong places. So what's going on here? This had people baffled for a while. But if you look at these spectra, you can see there's a bit of a clue. The yellow line and the orange line look pretty much the same. All that's happened is the orange line has moved a bit to the side. So it kind of looks like, in fact, these faraway galaxies are made of all the same elements as nearby galaxies. Just something weird has happened to stretch all the light. So all the photons of light that have travelled are a bit longer, so they're coming out at longer wavelengths, redder wavelengths. This is called redshift. So what could be causing this? Well, there's a guy you may have heard of by the name of Einstein who had an idea about this. His idea was that what could be happening is that space itself would be expanding. Um, sounds pretty weird, but in Einstein's theory, relativity space can do weird things like this. The idea is that if space is expanding, then as photons fly through space, photons are particles of light, they will get stretched. And so a particle of light that might originally be in this wavelength, off if it's been travelling and space has grown by 5%, might end up 5% longer by the time it reaches the Earth. So this is telling us that space is actually expanding. And the fact that distant things appear to the red is because the photons have been travelling for longer and space has stretched them all out. And space doesn't only stretch out photons, it stretches out the distances between galaxies. So let me show you a simulation of this. So here, they've got spheres as proxies for galaxies. And you can see they're all steadily moving apart. They're actually doing anything, they're just sitting there. What's happening is the space between them is growing. It doesn't matter what orientation you look at them from. You can look at them from down here or up there, and you'll see they're all slowly moving apart. So this is now pretty uncontroversial. We do seem to know that space is getting bigger very slowly, one part in 10 to the 18 per second, that's one part in a million, million, million odds, but things are moving further and further apart. Now, what does this mean for the fate of the universe? Well, if this keeps on happening, everything's going to move further and further apart, it means the universe will die of boredom. 
what will happen is eventually our own galaxy won't fall, fall apart by this. We'll just sit in our own galaxy, but other galaxies will move further and further away so eventually they're too far away for us to see. In our own galaxy, the stars will run out of fuel, the sun will go out. The uh, there'll, there'll be new stars because when our star dies, it squirts out gas that will form another star, and that will squirt out gas that forms another star. But each time it does that, there's less and less gas available. More and more is being turned into heavy elements that you can't burn nuclear fusion. Uh, eventually, a lot of mass will end up in black holes. Um, our sun won't end up as a black hole, but big stars will. And so as time goes on, we start losing other galaxies. You can't see very much anymore now. And we, so the sky becomes emptier and emptier, and our galaxy starts running down. The bright young stars go away, the old pathetic stars limp along, and eventually they run out of fuel and die. There'll be second and third and fourth and fifth generation stars. But it's all a downhill trend. For a very, very long time, but in this case, the universe just keeps on expanding forever, it will eventually die of boredom, die with a whimper. So that is one possibility. But if space is expanding, there's also this thing called gravity. And gravity pulls things back together again. So you have everything moving apart because of the kick it got from the Big Bang, but if it's all drifting apart and there's gravity pulling it back together again, maybe gravity could stop. So it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually it stops and then starts coming back together again until crash, you get what's called a big crunch or a galab gib, that being Big Bang stable backwards. So let's show a simulation of that. If I take this code and Put in some gravity, we'll see what difference it makes. So now you see things are expanding as before. Very slowly going outwards. That stopped. Oh, they're coming back in together again now. So they've moved out, moved out, the gravity slowed them down, and now it's coming back together again. You can see the same from any orientation. And things are getting much denser. In this case, everything went out of redshifts. And they actually rush in towards one another. I stopped it here, and when everything's crammed together, that's because my code couldn't manage it any further. It puts where they keep on crashing all the way down to get to a point. So this would be the universe ending with a bang, a sort of inverse, reverse big bang. Where everything gets crushed down, and we all die horribly. So in this scenario, the universe would not have time to die of boredom, the stars wouldn't have time to run out of fuel, because at some point, we know a very long way away, everything would turn around and come back together again. So these are the choices. The universe dies of a bang, or dies of a whimper. Which one is actually the case? Well, this, as you would imagine, has been a highly controversial and debated issue in astronomy for a long time. Do we know the answer? Well, we have some sort of idea. Let's get past that. The way we can measure it is we can look at how the size of the universe is changing. And measuring this is very hard. It's uh, got my colleague Brian Schultz a Nobel Prize recently. But let's see what's going on here. What we know is at the moment, the size of the universe is getting bigger. So the universe is smaller in the past, bigger in the future. The question is, if we extrapolate that forward, What's going to happen? It could be that the universe keeps on expanding forever, in which case in the past it would have been going at a fairly steady rate. An alternative would be that the universe is going to go a bit slower, get a maximum size, and then come back down to some horrible big crash. In which case, look back in time, should look something like that. So what people are trying to do is look at the distinction between this red line and the green line. If you look back in time, how rapidly is the universe decelerating? And for years we'll try to measure this, and there was huge controversy and uh, a lot of actually fairly bitter fighting between different camps about this, because the stakes are pretty big, is the universe going to go on forever or not? But in the end, two rival groups um, came up with the answer, and the answer is but if you look back in time, it actually looks something like that, which is seriously weird. So the universe actually starts off expanding slowly and has sped up as it starts off slowly and woof! This led to the discovery of dark energy, which I talked about in another talk. Um, so there must be some mysterious force driving this, we call dark energy. And if this is true, then in the future, the universe will go up like that 
expand faster and faster and faster. No one's quite sure exactly how fast it will go. Um, it might well be accelerating so fast that at some point in the future, about 100 billion years from now, um, it will not merely cause galaxies to move away from everyone else and die boredom, but it'll actually rip individual atoms apart. If this is the case, then about 100 billion years from now, we will have lost all the other galaxies and disappear too far away for us to see. About uh, eight minutes before the doom, we'll lose even the Magellanic clouds orbiting our own galaxy, we'll start seeing the stars disappear, and then in the last few minutes, the moon will disappear, the sun will disappear, and even the atoms of our body will be ripped apart by the expansion of space. We don't know if that's the case. It could well be that it just spreads apart very fast and we all die of boredom. But on the other hand, given we have absolutely no idea of what mysterious force is driving this, we call it dark energy, it's something that makes the universe expand faster. That's all we know about it. It's what makes the universe expand faster. So it could be, no one predicted it, but it'll turn up at some point and go into reverse. So it could yet be that at some point, this, whatever it is, because we don't know what it is, will stop and the universe will come right back down again. Or do something quite different. We don't know. I'm not entirely sure how we would know. Thank you very much for watching. I thought we'd finish off with a little bonus. Um, many of you have asked questions about these videos, the previous ones in the series on YouTube, and here I'd like to answer one of those. Here's one question. Um, if quantum mechanics works well for the small scale and is replaced by a theory of relativity on the large scale, isn't it possible that gravity pulls things together on a small scale and becomes repellent on a large scale? Can that be what is called dark matter? So this is coming from the whole idea of dark matter and dark energy. We know that things in the outskirts of galaxies are uh, moving too fast, the gravity must be too strong out there. But on a really big scale, things are being flung apart, so you're a pulse of force, which is what we normally call dark energy. Couldn't it just be that actually it's one force that behaves like gravity on scales of the solar system? Behaves like gravity plus a bit on the scales of the outskirts of the galaxy and turns repulsive and pushes things apart on really big scales. Well, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, many people have tried to think we've got three big, two big mysteries here. Maybe it's just one big mystery. Maybe gravity and dark matter and dark energy were elements of some new wonder force that changes sign. That's certainly possible. Um, in fact, I was being ear bashed by uh, one of my colleagues at Mount Stromlo about a theory that was just that just a couple of days ago. Um, a rather weird theory, but it sounded quite interesting, um, which actually could explain all these things as manifestations of some weird force involving vacuum energy. I didn't quite understand the details. So yes, this is entirely possible. At the moment, we are calling what makes things go around too fast that's that's galaxy dark matter, and what makes things expand on really big scales dark energy, but it could well be that they are all the same thing. Thank you.